Hare Krishna and welcome to all the devotees online. Thank you very much for your wonderful association where we continue to associate with Srila Prabhupada's Srimad Bhagavatam and his Bhaktivedanta purports for our own purification. We're covering Canto 1, Chapter 5, verses 32 to 40, Narad's instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam for Srila Vyasadev. Let us recite some prayers. Om Magyana Timi Vandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshur Militam Yena Tasme Shri Guruve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Soyam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadan Tikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapada Kamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Scha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ruganatam Tamitam Tam Sajivam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsta He Krishna Karuna Sindo Dinabando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namaste Tapta Panchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishapanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priya Vancha kalpata rubyascha, kripa sindhu vevacha, patita nam pavine bio, vaishnave bio, namo maha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shiva Sadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Sarva Shastra Vyusha Sarva Vedeka Sattvala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnadiya Sarva Lokai Tritvada Sarva Bhagavata Prana Srimad Bhagavata Prabhu Kalidando Didaritya Shri Krishna Parivartita O Srimad Bhagavatam, O Nectar Churn from the Ocean of All, the All Vedic Scriptures, O Most Prominent Chancellor of Fruit of All the Vedas, O You are Enriched with the Jewels of All Spiritual Philosophic Conclusions, O you grant spiritual vision to all the people of the world. O light breath of the Vaishnava devotees. O Lord, you are the sun which has arisen to dispel the darkness of Kali Yuga. You are actually Lord Krishna who has returned amongst us. Paramananda Pataya Pemava Shashurayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Shri Krishnaya Namastute O Shumad Bhagavad. I offer respectful obeisance unto you. By reading you one attains transcendental bliss. For your syllables reign, pure love of God upon the reader. You are always to be served by everyone, for you are incarnation of Lord Krishna. Madhika bandha mad sangim mad guru mad mahadana mad nishtaraka mad bhagya mad ananda namastute. O Shumad Bhagavatam, O my only friend, O my companion, O my teacher, O my great wealth, O my deliverer, O my good fortune, O my bliss, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Asadu sadu tadai natti nicho chataraka hanamun chakda chinmam premna ritkata yospura. O Shumad Bhagavatam. O give O saintly Mishran saint, you are uplifted or very fallen. Please do not ever leave me. Please become manifest in my heart and my throat, accompanied with your love of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Vama, Hare Vama, Vama Vama, Hare Hare. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, Janma Dhyasya Yaton Vayari Tarata, Sarte Swabhigna Swarat. Tene Brahma Hidaya Dikavaye Muyanti Yatsuraya 
Ejo vari mridam yata vinimayo yatra tisago mrisha. Damna suena sadani rastakuakam satyam param di mahi. O my Lord Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, all pervading person out of Godhead, after my respectful obeisance to you, I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute and the final cause of all causes of creation, suffering, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmanji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by an illusory representation of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him did the material universe temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore merit upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Prayana Paisha Sabya Kalavas Minyuge Jana Manda Sumanda Madrayo Manda Bhagyu Padrata. All learned one in this iron age of Kali, men about short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. Narayanam Namaskritya Narachevam Narotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayan Jayam Udirayet. Perfectly citing the Srimad Bhagavad which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisance unto the person out of God at Narayan. Unto Naran Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, and unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Sabai pum soparo dharmo yato bhakti rado kshajay ahitati aparati ataya yatma suprasiddhati. Supreme occupation dharma for all humanity is that by which men can attain to loving devotional service unto the transcendental Lord. Such devotional service must be unmotivated and uninterrupted, completely satisfy itself. Vasudeva Bhagavati Bhakti Yoga Prayojita Janati Asyu Vairagyam Jnanam Cha Yad Ahurtam By rendering devotional service unto the personality of God at Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. Vadanti Tattva Tvavidas Tattvam Yajgnana Madvayam Brahmeti Paramatmeti Bhagavaniti Sabhyate Shurshush are the learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth called its non dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. Shushrusho Sharadan Stanasya Vasudeva Kata Ruchis Yan Mahat Sevaya Vipra Punya Tirta Nishevanat. O twice born sages, by serving those devotees are completely freed from all vice great services done. Such, by such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Shrendutam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Riddhan Tastoya Badrani Vidunati Shritsatam Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead, who is Paramatma, super soul in everyone's heart, and a benefactor, truth, benefactor of a truthful devotee, cleanses the desire for material enjoyment from the heart of the devotee who has developed the urge to hear his messages, which are in themselves virtues when properly heard and chanted. Nastapayashu Badreshu Nittam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Neshtiki by regular attendance in the classroom of Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotees, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed in loving service under the personality of God at who is praised with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya We are continuing Srimad Bhagavatam based on the teachings of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta and the Swami the founder Acharya of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness. So let us recap. Uh, please share uh, what you took away from last week's lesson. You can also unmute yourself if you like to speak, um, but you can definitely touch, uh, type in the chat. Okay. So Bafana Prabhu says, seeking association of pure devotees, unadulterated great soul devotees, obedient neophyte devotees following instructions, signs of a devotee who is determined to achieve success even in the existing duration of life. Ignorance result in accepting gross and subtle covering, losing sight of the fact that I and the Lord are actually transcendental. And this was Narad Muni's realization. Wonderful. Here, the narrations of the Lord's pastimes is equivalent to being in direct contact with the Lord. Yes. One can attain, one can attain to the highest perfection of life simply by attentive hearing of the transcendental pastimes of the Lord from the right sources, as 
she narrated heard from the pure devotees. Process of hearing and associating pure devotees recommended in the age in this age of Kali. K is also needed for pseudo devotees. Yes, we have to be careful. Looking forward to hear the most confidential knowledge. Wonderful, thank you. Afana Prabhu Nalikanta Prabhu says, life of Nari Muni is so inspiring and teaches us many lessons. I really like how beneficial it is to serve the pure devotees, Bhaktivedantas, and how they are impartially giving mercy to everyone. Definitely. Mother Archana Siddhi says, when one associates with the Bhaktivedantas, there are three things that will happen. Spiritual discussion, we start to discuss spiritual subject matters with the Bhaktivedantas, knowledge transmission, we get knowledge, and finally our heart becomes transformed by their association. Hamavati Radhika says, uh, the power of taking remnants of pure devotees can change one's li life as we see in Narad Muni. Yes. Uttara uh, Rani David, as he says, the four types of karma from Sanchi to uh, Agami. Rasaraj Prabhu says, Srila Prabhupada said, the more we become the servant of the servant of the servant, the sweeter and sweeter our Krishna conscious becomes. It's an interesting uh, fact, which is Olin's Giraj Maj in one lecture uh, last week mentioned, or this week mentioned, that in the spiritual world, uh, the gopis, especially the intimate associates of, Sh of Shumati Radhwani and Krishna, their whole mood is to find a new gopi that came, uh, that's, that has taken birth in Vrindavan. So they're always looking, where's the new gopi? Where's the new devotee that has come so that we can train them up, we can engage them in the service of Krishna. So this is their mood. They're always looking, uh, where are the new souls? So we should also be looking, uh, where are the new souls that we can uh, help guide in Krishna consciousness? Mother Les says, the Lord says in Bhagavad Gita, all Vedas are searching after me. And Lord Chaitanya says that there are only three subject matters in the Vedas. Living entity is to reestablish the relationship with the Supreme Lord, performing devotional service duties and achieving the ultimate going, ultimate goal, going back to God. Yes, wonderful. Hamavati also, uh, so also I liked uh, Yamuna Devi's dream and how Jayananda Prabhu engaged everyone in service and rewarded them after uh, afterwards so wonderfully never underest underestimate devotional service yes the personal touch of uh, greeting giving prasad uh, loving exchanges which rupa goswami says they are very very powerful sharma says simply by following shila Prabhupada's instructions we will go back to krishna most definitely asaraj Prabhu says pride in shila Prabhupada's world a world trying to be the last in line of masters. In the spiritual world, sorry. Right, pride in spiritual world, yes. Trying to be last in line of the masters, yes. That is what Giraj Maj also, also mentioned, that uh, the pride of a devotee in the spiritual world is that I'm uh, the last in line of all the masters, uh, which means I want to be the last servant serving everyone else. Wonderful. Mother Les says, a flow of devotional service is so powerful, even an onlooker can be liberated. Wonderful. All right, thank you very much for your feedback. Let us proceed. So today, uh, we're gonna be covering 32 to 40. Verse, uh, verses 32 to 40, Narad advises Shila Vyasadev, uh, extremely powerful, potent, instructive purpose. Uh, practically every, you know, every statement of Shila Prabhupada is so profound uh, for us to imbibe. And if we really sincerely take these instructions to heart, we will experience the same result that Narad Muni is experiencing. Narad Muni uh, 
has gone through practically 12 uh, of the different 11, uh, close to 11, about 11 of the different stages that we covered. And now uh, he is going to personally see the Supreme Lord um, develop his love completely and get full darshan of the Supreme Lord. So these last few stages uh, we're going to hear about. And then Narad Muni is now going to conclude his instructions to Srila Vyasadeva. So we all suffering in this world and the solution, <clears throat> the solution is given. We have the solution right in our hands. And where's that solution? Please hear Srila Prabhupada. Don't you read? Do you read? If you don't read, then you'll feel restless. Uh, let me go from Japan to India, from India to Japan. You are restless because you don't read. I am laboring so hard for you, but you don't take advantage. Do you don't take advantage of eating and sleeping. Take advantage of these books. Then your life will be successful. My duty I am giving so valuable things. Huh? Day and night, try to convince you. Eat what to work. And if you don't take advantage of this, then what can I do for you? So Srila uh, Prabhupada makes it very clear here. His, he struggled so hard, sleepless nights, hmm, giving his bhakti under the purports. For who? For you and me. Hmm. So therefore, Prabhupada is encouraging us, take advantage. Hmm. Prabhupada didn't come to cheat anyone in this world. He came to give the most valuable solution and gift. We need to con constantly remind ourselves to take advantage. The solution is in our hands. So verses 32 to, 20, uh, 32 to 36, Narad Muni is going to cover the process of karma yoga. How uh, by acting because everybody has to act nobody can avoid acting everyone has to act everybody has to work do something but how can we do something so we don't uh, become implicated in the chains of the car of karmic reaction but actually we can break those chains of karmic reaction completely forever and as Prabhupada repeatedly says, in this one life, we can do it. Generally, it takes millions of lifetimes to perfect one's life. But Srila Prabhupada is, a, is repeatedly encouraging us that what he has given us, the mercy of Lord Chaitanya, the mercy of the Lord in this age, uh, if we really take seriously to the process that they have given us in this life, we can perfect our existence. So text 32. Etad sam suchitam brahmams tapatraya chikit sitam yad ishware bhagavati karma brahmani bhavitam O Brahmana Vyasadeva. It is decided by the learned that the best remedial measure for removing all troubles and miseries is to dedicate one's activities to the service of the Supreme Lord, personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna. Prabhupada elaborates in the purport. Shinarad Muni personally experienced that the most feasible and practical way to open the path of salvation or get relief from all miseries, not one, not two, not three, all is to hear submissively the transcendental activities of the Lord from the right and bona fide sources. This 
is the only remedial process. So there is no other option. There is no other solution. This is the only way one can become free. There may be other solutions where you get some minor relief. You may even take some solutions that complicates your problem and implicates you even in greater difficulties. But the surest, safest, quickest, most easiest process for becoming free is simply to hear submissively transcendental activities of the Lord, which includes the holy name of Krishna. The entire material existence is full of miseries. Foolish people have manufactured out of their tiny brains many remedial measures for removing the threefold miseries pertaining to the body and mind, pertaining to natural disturbances and in relation with other living beings. The world, whole world is struggling very hard to exist out to exit out of these miseries. But men do not know that without the sanction of the Lord, no plan or no remedial measure can actually bring about the desired peace and tranquility. The remedial measure to cure a patient by medical treatment is useless if it is not sanctioned by the Lord. So Robert makes a very, very important point here that every single solution out there that has been given in the past, given now, and given in the future is useless. If it is not sanctioned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it will not have effect if it's not sanctioned by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So that means uh, we can apply this in two ways in our life. One is that if something, if some misery falls upon us and we do what's practical to come out of that misery and we are able to come out of that misery, we should understand that that is the mercy of the Lord. It was sanctioned by the Lord. Otherwise, it will never fructify. It will never give us the desired result because it has not been sanctioned by the Supreme Lord. The other way to look at it is that Krishna has already sanctioned the remedy in Srimad Bhagavatam in Bhagavad Gita. Therefore, uh, we should take that as the primary remedy for perfecting our life. It's not that we do not uh, uh, do the needful in terms of practically but we have to understand that even if you practically do whatever you need to do to get yourself out of the threefold miseries of life, as Prabhupada is describing here, uh, miseries pertaining to the body and mind, miseries pertaining to natural disturbances and miseries pertaining to other living beings. Still, even if you have the most perfect solution given to us by uh, people in this world, it will fail if it's not sanctioned by the Supreme Lord. Prahlad March says, he offers a prayer to Lord Nishingadev that no medicine can save one from uh, any illness or death. No ship can save one across the ocean. And no parents can protect the children unless it is sanctioned by Lord Nishingadev, unless we have the mercy of Lord Nishingadev. And ultimately, Lord Nishingadev uh, can protect us, the Lord can protect us from all miseries, even without the medicine, the ship, or uh, people that are there to protect us. And even if we have all the medicine, all the boats, all the ships, and uh, all uh, our guardians, they can fail. Uh, 
uh, we find like the Titanic. They said it's unsinkable, yet uh, it sunk. So only the Lord, his shelter is absolute. In act of instruction, Prabhupada describes that taking shelter of anyone else is durashraya, <clears throat> bad shelter. Shelter that will always fail you. Sooner or later, it's going to fail. Real shelter, absolute shelter, guaranteed shelter, perfect shelter, the most blissful shelter, infallible shelter is the lotus feet of uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Achyuta, Krishna. Then Prabhupada continues. And he gives examples. So first one he gives is uh, the remedial measure to cure a patient by medical treatment is useless if it's not sanctioned by the Lord. To cross the river or ocean by a suitable boat is no remedial measure if, if it is not sanctioned by the Lord. We should know for certain that the Lord is the ultimate sanctioner, sanctioning officer. And we must therefore dedicate our attempts to the mercy of the Lord for ultimate success to get rid of the obstacles on the path of success. So this is the secret. Dedicate all our attempts, dedicate everything we do to the mercy of the Lord. If something good happens to us, we generally say, thank you, Krishna, your mercy. If something bad happens to us, we also have to say, thank you, Krishna, it's your mercy. In this way, see every activity because it's sanctioned by Krishna, good and the bad, for our benefit. We have to see it, that it was sanctioned by Krishna, therefore there's a purpose behind it. Just like COVID. COVID would not happen. Doesn't matter what conspiracy, conspiracy theory we may uh, come up with, which may be true or false, it doesn't matter. Whether it's man-made or it's you know created naturally, whatever. The situation is the fact that it was sanctioned by the Lord means there's a reason behind it. And the reason is there may be many reasons. I speculated one reason that I just consider, you know, Krishna consciousness movement, the devotees of preaching, they were having programs, uh, devotees were going to the temple. But we were not taking full advantage of the internet. The whole world is moving uh, onto the internet. Just like shopping was you know, going from a supermarket to a store on the internet. Advertising going from you know, public or street advertising, uh, post advertising, etc., to social media on the internet. The whole world is moving onto the internet. And uh, the devotees were not grabbing that opportunity. So Krishna said, okay, let's uh, sanction COVID. And now you're forced to use the internet. See? Now you have to learn to use it. Forced you, now everybody's on the internet. So that's the blessing. Krishna, if you don't take advantage in the direction that Krishna wants you to go, Krishna will force you. Because this mission of Lord Chaitanya needs to go for the next 10,000 years. So uh, that was my speculative reason. But there may be many reasons. The fact is, it is sanctioned by the Supreme Lord. We have to understand also in, when Prabhupada is talking about san sanctioning, it's not that the Lord wants the living entity, want the living entity to suffer. No. The Lord is not happy that people misuse material nature to exploit and cause suffering. The Lord doesn't desire that, but still the Lord will sanction for our benefit, for our purification. Misery and suffering is also there so that we can realize that this material world uh, is tottering like a drop of water on a lotus leaf. And therefore we should be taking Krishna consciousness very seriously. Let us learn to dedicate our attempts. Whatever we do, dedicate that to the Supreme Lord. Offer it to the Supreme Lord. 
in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna said uh, by the statement Om Tat Sat, this is what it's referring to. Om Tat Sat, let me offer. I'm uh, doing some activity. I'm whatever activity it may be. After that activity, if I say Om Tat Sat, let me offer this to the Supreme Lord. Then Prabhupada continues, the Lord is all pervading, all powerful, omniscient, and omnipresent. He is the ultimate sanctioning agent of all good and bad effects. We should therefore learn to dedicate our activities unto the mercy of the Lord and accept him either as impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, or the Supreme Personality of God. It does not matter what one is. So very, very wonderful. First point that Prabhupada is sharing uh, in this purport is learn to dedicate everything to the mercy of Krishna. Link everything to the mercy of Krishna. See everything through the mercy of Krishna. In that way, whatever comes upon us, the good, the bad, the ugly, it doesn't matter. See it as Krishna. And especially for devotees, the karmis, the materialists, Krishna does not interfere with them. He does not interfere with their karma. But for the devotees, Krishna is personally taking charge. Prabhupada says, as soon as you start chanting the, the holy name of Krishna, uh, Krishna takes care of your karma. Krishna takes charge. He administers your karma. And he minimizes your karma. Therefore, in that way, we can see everything that happens to us we can thank Krishna. That thank you, Krishna, you're supposed to cut my arm. Uh, you just cut my finger. Thank you. You're supposed to you know, give me so much more and you're minimizing. Thank you. In this way, we can see, uh, uh, see and dedicate everything unto the mercy of Krishna. Then Prabhupada <clears throat> elaborates and focuses on this word. Uh, some decided by the learned. Prabhupada writes, one must dedicate everything in the service of the Lord. If one is a learned scholar, scientist, philosopher, poet, etc., then he should employ his learning to establish the supremacy of the Lord. Try to study the energy of the Lord in every sphere of life. Do not decry him and try to become like him or take his position simply by fragmental accumulation of knowledge. If one is an administrator, statements, a warrior, politician, etc., then one should try to establish the Lord's supremacy in statementship. Fight for the cause of the Lord as Sri Arjuna did. In the beginning, Sri Arjuna, the great fighter, declined to fight. But when he was convinced by the Lord that the fighting was necessary, Sri Arjuna changed his decision and fought for his cause. Similarly, if one is a businessman, an industrialist, an agriculturalist, etc., then one should spend his hard-earned money for the cause of the Lord. So very, very, very practical. You don't need to be a pujari. You don't need to be a full-time devotee in uh, the temple because you may have all these different occupations or you may be engaged in one of these different occupations uh, as a family man, as a family uh, member, household member, mother, father, etc. So you may be engaged in one of these activities and you may have to work. So what do you do? Robert says, spend your hard-earned money for the cause of the Lord. Try to use the results of your work, your talents to glorify the Lord, to please the Lord, to serve the Lord. Uh, and in this way, uh, this will protect you. This will shield you. This will make you immune to the law of karma. Prabhupada continues, think always that the money which is accumulated is the wealth of the Lord. Now, Prabhupada is saying, okay, use everything in Krishna's service, but also keep in your mind 
keep this always, that you are accumulating money. Your boss is paying you a salary. Where is he getting that wealth from? From the goddess of fortune. It is Krishna's wealth. So he is giving you Krishna's wealth. When you receive Krishna's wealth, that wealth is Krishna's wealth. Therefore, you need to engage it back to the owner. Just like uh, Mother Ganges, we worship Mother Ganges by offering prayers, and we also worship Mother Ganges and respect Mother Ganges by taking water from Mother Ganga and offer it back to Mother Ganga. Like that, whatever the Lord gives us, we accept and then we offer it back to the service of the Lord. We have to do this. As soon as you take ownership or proprietorship that, oh, it's my wealth, you become bound. It is Krishna's wealth in your care, not your wealth, but Krishna's wealth in your care. Wealth is considered to be the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi. And Lord and the Lord is Narayan, or the husband of Lakshmi. Try to engage Lakshmi in the service of Lord Narayan and be happy. Try to engage Lakshmi in the service of Narayan and be happy. That is the way to realize the Lord in every sphere of life. That is the way to realize the Lord in every sphere of life. Remember, Prabhupada is putting these statements down, not just to fill the pages. Prabhupada said he had to meditate on every single word. Sometimes Prabhupada would meditate for three days which word to use. So every statement of Srila Prabhupada uh, is very consciously written. We can realize the Lord in, in any sphere of life. Doesn't matter who you are, or what your occupation is. We have that opportunity by understanding the Supreme Lord's position and our position as servants. The best thing is, after all, to get relief from all material activities and engage oneself completely in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. Now here's another alternative. If one is uh, implicated or one is involved uh, in serving uh, or supporting a household, then this is how one should engage in life. If one has the opportunity uh, to fully surrender oneself completely, one can do that by completely engage in hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord or completely dedicating one li one's life in the service of the Lord where uh, you don't have uh, your mundane occupation in terms of, let's say, you know, uh, you're working. So you have to work to get some results, to get wealth to support the family. But uh, if you surrender fully, like uh, devotees who have the opportunity to surrender fully uh, in the temple, where they only engage in serving the Lord, either through preaching, uh, through pujari service, etc. Uh, so that opportunity is always there. But either way, one can perfect one's life and realize the Supreme Lord. But in the case of the absence of such an opportunity, one should try to engage in the service of the Lord everything for which one has specific attraction and that is the way of peace and prosperity the word sam suchitam in this stanza is also significant one should not think for a moment that the realization of narada was childish imagination only it is not like that it is so realized by the expert and erudite scholars and that is the real import the word some suchitam. So Narad Muni is saying, it's my realization that I, I got this, uh, that this is how I perfected my life, 
but even learned scholars have mentioned this. So in this way, uh, he is also uh, giving authority, uh, quoting authority, just like in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also quotes authority that the sages, they say this. So learned scholars say this. Dedicate your life. And we know even in the uh, 12th chapter of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna gives different stages. If you can't fully dedicate your life in the service of the Lord, mind, body, and words, simply uh, doing the Lord's service, then uh, you can uh, try to engage in practical devotional service or sadhana bhakti, regulative devotional service. If you can't do that, uh, then uh, and, you know, try to engage your wealth uh, in uh, the mission of the Lord, work for the Lord. If you can't do that, uh, then cultivate knowledge. If you can't do that, uh, uh, Krishna says, you know, try to give in charity, etc. So different stages like that. So here, uh, Prabhupada is encouraging and Narad Muni is encouraging us, uh, try to see that the wealth that you get, the paycheck that you get is Lakshmi, it's coming from Krishna and we should engage her in the service of Krishna. Engaging her in the service of Krishna uh, naturally also means making your household a temple. So seeing your family members as uh, part and parcel of Krishna, seeing uh, your house not as your house, but uh, you as a resident, uh, as a tenant of Krishna's house. And in this way, uh, whatever you arrange in the house for the pleasure of Krishna, that way you can free yourself from the bonds of karmic reaction. Text 33. Amayo yascha bhutanam jayate yena suvratam tad ev tad evaya man mayam dravyam napunnati chikit fitam O oh, good soul does not a thing applied to the applied therapeutically cure a disease which was caused by the very same thing so now narad muni is giving uh, the example uh, or is uh, making the point that Medicine can cure, but medicine can also cause illness. You can, and Prabhupada in the purpose is going to elaborate and give an example of milk. Milk can uh, cause uh, illness and milk can also cure. So here we have a knife and the knife is not good or bad. It depends on the consciousness of the person in whose hand that knife is. That knife can be used by an expert uh, surgeon to cure or to save someone's life. And it can be used in the hands of a thief to kill someone. So like that, if we know how to use everything we got in life, how to live, with the proper consciousness, we can be prosperous and happy. Prabhupada writes, an expert physician treats his patient with a, a therapeutic diet. For example, milk preparation sometimes <clears throat> cause disorder of the bowels, but the very same milk converted into curd and mixed with some other medial ingredients cures such disorders. Similarly, the threefold miseries of material existence cannot be mitigated simply by material activities. Such activities must be spiritualized just as by fire, iron is made red hot and thereby the action of fire begins. Similarly, the material conception of a thing is at once changed as soon as it is put into the service of the Lord. That is the secret of spiritual success. We should not try to lord it over material nature, nor should we reject material things. So don't reject material things, especially if they can be used in the service of Krishna. And whatever you get, 
Do not lord it over material nature. Do not exploit it. Do not try to engage it for simply for one sense pleasure. It should be used for the pleasure of the master. The best way to make the best use of a bad bargain is to use everything in relation with the supreme spiritual being. So we should remember this. If we can ingrain uh, these instructions into our consciousness and heart and live by these principles, these instructions, we will become red hot in devotional service and perfect our life. Everything is an emanation from the Supreme Spirit. And by his inconceivable power, he can convert spirit into matter and matter into spirit. Therefore, a material thing, so-called, is at once turned into a spiritual force by the great will of the Lord. So consider internet. Right now we're using internet. It's, a, it's apparently a material thing. But because we are using it in the service of the Lord, it does not have the effect of that which is material. It has an effect which is completely spiritual. That same material, that same material invention can also have a material effect if it's not used in the service of the Lord. The necessary condition for such a change is to employ so-called matter in the service of the spirit. That is the way to treat our material disease and elevate ourselves to the spiritual plane where there is no misery, no lamentation, no fear. So if we don't want any misery, we don't want any lamentation, and we don't want any fear, then we have to heed the instruction of Srila Prabhupada, that we have to elevate ourselves to the spiritual plane. How? Simply employ so-called matter in the service of spirit. When everything is thus employed in the service of the Lord, we can expect, we can experience that there is nothing except the Supreme Brahman. The Vedic mantra that everything is Brahman is thus realized by us. In a lecture, New Vrindavan, June 11, 1969, Prabhupada says, there's a different type of use. If somebody says, it is the same money, how by spending it for Krishna consciousness it becomes nice? The question may be raised. The money is the same. How you say that when it is employed in Krishna consciousness business, it is nice. And when it is not employed, it is bad. Money is the same. So good question. Prabhupada says, continues, the reply is there. Bhag Bhagavad says, what is the reply? Uh, now, chikit shitam, the example is given. Just like milk, if you take, milk is very nice food. But if you take more, then there will be disorder of the bowels. If you, by greediness, you take more milk, then there will be bowel complaint. Yes. Then, when there is bowel complaint, you go to the physician. Then he gives you a prescription, another milk preparation. What is that? Yogurt. If you say to the physician, well, I'm suffering by taking milk preparation and you giving me another milk preparation, how is it, how, how it will be cured? No, it will be cured. Chikichitam. The same milk converted into yogurt, add a little black pepper, a little salt and lime, it will cure. So anytime you have some bowel issues, uh, you can take some yogurt, a little black pepper, a little salt, a little lime, and it'll cure. The origin is the milk. So one way you become diseased, and the other way you become cured. But the preparation is the same. Milk. Similarly, this material world, there is different type of use. As soon as you use it for your sense gratification, you are, you'll be affected by material disease. And if you use it for Krishna consciousness, it will elevate you to liberated condition. So that's the secret. Use everything 
for Krishna consciousness and you'll be elevated. Use anything for your sense gratification and you'll be affected by material disease. So the choice really is in our hands. And the more we become convinced, <clears throat> the more we take this principle from zero to 100, we will basically perfect our life. Some activities we can easily uh, offer it to the Supreme Lord. Others may be more difficult, but we have to go from zero to 100% in offering every activity for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. So this is what we should learn to cultivate. Every day, try to cultivate every, you know, we have, we have the opportunity, we have the opportunity to practice this every single moment of our life. And if we can, every single moment, see, am I doing this for the pleasure of Krishna or is it for my sense gratification? We can understand the result. One disciple of Srila Prabhupada, uh, this is how he practically lived his life. He lived his life simply with this consciousness that whatever I do, is it pleasing Srila Prabhupada? Yes, do it. No, don't do it. This is how he lived his life. From the time he woke up uh, to the time he slept. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that devotee was Jayananda Prabhu. So he would live his life like that. So for example, should I take rest? Will that please Srila Prabhupada? Yes. Then rest. I need to get up for Mangalarti. Will that please Srila Prabhupada? Yes. Then he gets up. I need to brush my teeth. Will that please Srila Prabhupada? Yes. Then brush your teeth. This is how he would uh, practically live his life. Whatever he did, this is how he lived his life. He followed this principle. Whatever you do, uh, do it for the pleasure of Krishna. Do it in Krishna consciousness. And because of that consciousness, uh, he uh, became complete, he became a saint, became completely purified. Now, Prabhupada also warns the danger of exploitation, of exploiting. And this statement we have to remember, you are dealing with Krishna. Prabhupada already in the previous purport, Prabhupada said, where's that? Right, I'll just repeat. Prabhupada said, uh, Krishna is uh, omniscient, he's omnipresent, uh, he's omnipotent, he's powerful, he's everywhere. So therefore, you cannot cheat Krishna. It's not like I can exploit the resources when nobody's seen and I'll be scot-free. No, you, can, you, you can't escape Krishna's eyes. You may escape the devotee's eyes, but you cannot escape Krishna's eyes. Sooner or later, you will be revealed. Uh, your, uh, your activities will be revealed. And you will get a reaction. So we have to understand, we're dealing with Krishna. We're not dealing with you know, some other person that is not omnipotent, not omniscient, not omnipresent. We're dealing with Krishna. Therefore, we have to be very careful. And we have to know that if we exploit, the reaction is there, whether you like it or not. Prabhupada in a lecture says, uh, this is within the blood of every Indian. And what is that? Uh, that statement, use one farthing uh, for sense gratification, uh, then we'll have to pay for it. So the law of karma, they are completely aware. So Prabhupada says, uh, this is within the blood of every Indian that if I cheat you, or if I take some money from you without your benefit, without repayment, then I will have to suffer. 
still in India, they believe this. They knew that I cannot cheat you, karmi. Uh, in the karma kanda, if I cheat you, then I will have to pay you four times this life or next life. It is law of karma. Therefore, we are collecting money. We should not cheat. Every paisa should be spent for Krishna. Otherwise, we shall be liable to pay. If we use one farthing for our sense gratification, then we will have to pay for it. Yet, this is the law of karma. So we have to <clears throat> keep this in mind and uh, know that if we, you know, as, as, as ambassadors and as servants uh, for Srila Prabhupada in the Krishna conscious uh, mission, if we uh, get wealth, if we get donations, uh, we should use that in the service of Krishna and not for our sense gratification. Uh, otherwise, the reaction uh, will be there. Uh, one time, uh, there was one uh, sadhu was taking his disciples um, on a, you know, uh, uh, through the forest, and they saw a snake that came out of the cave, and that snake was being bitten by many, many ants. And that uh, spiritual teacher told the disciples, do you know why uh, that is the situation? Why is the snake been bitten by so many ants? And they couldn't answer. And he said, that snake was the guru in his past life of these ants who were his disciples. And because the guru uh, was exploiting his disciples for sense gratification, now they've come back biting. So the law of karma, you cannot escape. You have to uh, pay the price. So therefore we have to be very, very careful. And I gave, uh, I also shared that one pastime where uh, one of Srila Bhakti Sinan Maj's uh, sannyasis, he was a great Sankirtan collector. He would collect, you know, lots of Lakshmi and very renounced, uh, very sincere, very dedicated in serving Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Samaj. So one day he uh, wanted uh, to buy some toiletries, some soap, uh, and some, you know, uh, necess some necessities, which was like few paisas, very little soap or some, you know, some things that he wanted. So he collected a lot of donation, large amount, and he thought, okay, you know, I, got, I collected a large amount today. I'll just take a few paisa for my soap and you know, some toiletries. It's necessities. I need that. So he kept some paisa for him. Then he took the rest of the donation and he went to Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj and he gave the donation. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj received the donation and asked him, so did you give everything? And he said, yes, Guru Maharaj. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Maharaj asked him again, did you give everything? And he said, well, uh, I, I kept a few paisa for me for some soap and some necessities that I ne needed. And Srila Bhakti Sinamaj became very upset, extremely upset. He said, give that back to me. So he took his a few paisas that he, rupees that he you know, saved for him, and he gave it back to Srila Bhakti Sinamaj. Srila Bhakti Sinamaj received it. And then gave it back to him and said, yeah, you can have it now. And he told him, he said, I can digest. You cannot digest. Meaning that when we collect donation, there is, there is karmic reaction involved in that. And Srila Bhakti Sinarama, Srila Prabhupada, they can digest that reaction, neutralize it and purify it so that they can purify it, that they can engage that purified Lakshmi in the service of Krishna. Whereas if we just take that, we don't have the capacity to digest that karma, purify that karma. So here, it wasn't that Srila Bhaktisanmaj didn't you know, want to give him uh, the paisa, no, he gave it to him. 
but first he purified it by accepting it and then giving it uh, back. So like that, Srila Prabhupada would engage everyone in the mission of Krishna consciousness, uh, but he would use everything for the service of Krishna. We find that Srila Prabhupada never put himself in front. Uh, even when they would be building a temple like in Juhu uh, or other places, uh, you know, Prabhupada would be concerned about the facilities for the deities, the temple arrangement, everything for Krishna, but not for him. Oh, when, you know, when, where's my room? Uh, you know, where's my facility? Uh, my room should be like this and my room should be like this. No, Prabhupada never uh, spoke like that. Prabhupada never was concerned like, yes, the devotees, they wanted to offer Prabhupada the best. But, you know, Prabhupada was never putting himself in the forefront. In fact, uh, one time one reporter asked Srila Prabhupada, uh, can you please tell me about you? And Srila Prabhupada said, you know, why do you want to know about me? It's like, I'm nobody. Let me tell you about Krishna. And uh, Prabhupada's servant said, no, no, Swamiji, uh, no, Prabhupada, you know, the reporter is asking, and if, if you tell them about you, they uh, become inspired about you, then they'll want to know more about your books. And they'll want to read your books. And then when Prabhupada heard that, he said, oh, then it's okay. Then I'll tell you about me. See, So Prabhupada was always putting himself at the back and Krishna in front. So I'd like to play you this beautiful, one of my favorite clips uh, about devotional service bhakti, but in relation to you are dealing with Krishna. So when Prabhupada tells us that, uh, be careful. Be careful how you're serving Krishna and be careful of not exploiting Krishna's resources because Krishna uh, cannot be messed with. He's the supreme personality of Godhead. He knows everything. He's everywhere. He's all-powerful. That was there is a Bhushidas Bhavaji Maharaj. He was talking with his deity. Krishna, just like Madan Mahan. He was talking with Sanatana Goswami. Madan Mahan, Sanatana Goswami at that time had no temple. Uh, he was hanging his deity uh, on the tree. So Madan Mahan was talking with him, Sanatana, you are bringing all these dry chapatis and it is stale. And you don't give me even little salt. How can I eat? Sadhana Goswami says, Sir, where shall I go? Whatever I get, I offer you. You kindly accept. I cannot move, old man. So Krishna had to eat there. <laughs> because the bhakta is offering, he cannot refuse. Oh. Jīmāṁ bhaktyā prasicca. Real thing is bhakti. What you can offer to Krishna, everything belongs to Krishna. Huh? What you have got? What is your value? And what is the value of your things? There is nothing. Therefore, the real thing is bhaktyā. Real thing is your feeling. Krishna, kindly take it. I have no qualification. I am most rotten fallen. But I applaud this thing for you. Please say. This will be accepted. Uh, don't be perturbed. Always be careful. You are dealing with Krishna. That is my request. Thank you very much. So we are dealing with Krishna. Uh, we have to be very careful. It's his resources. Therefore, uh, we should offer it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Prabhupada is also saying we should offer it uh, with that feeling that, uh, my Lord, I'm useless. I don't have anything, but please accept this. That was there. Text 34. Evam rinam kriya yoga sarvesham sriti hetava ta evatma vinashaya Kalpen, kal, kalpante, kalpita pare. Thus, when all a man's activities are dedicated to the Lord, to the service of the Lord, 
those very activities which caused his actual bondage become the destroyer of the tree of work. Papa writes, fruit of work, which has perpetual, perpetually engaged the living entity, living being, is compared to the banyan tree in Bhagavad Gita, for it is certainly deeply, very deeply rooted. You can see this banyan tree. You don't even know which is the main trunk because it practically roots itself. Every branch that grows can come and become a root and it goes deep and it's very deeply rooted. So this is our life. As long as the propensity for enjoying the fruit of work is there, one has to continue the transmigration of the soul from one body or place to another according to one's nature of work. So this propensity needs to be purified. The propensity for enjoyment may be turned into the desire for serving the mission of the Lord. So here's another statement that we can ingrain into our consciousness. We all have the propensity to enjoy. It's there. It's been there since time immemorial. We do things for pleasure, for our senses. So, okay, you want to do things for your pleasure? Turn that desire into uh, service or uh, turn that uh, desire for serving the mission of the Lord. For example, you like to eat delicious things. Okay, you turn that in the mission of the Lord. And in the mission of the Lord, we can offer, we can cook prasad and offer and distribute. Right? So in this way, we can dovetail, we can transform every desire right, into the mission of the Lord. By doing so, one's activity is changed into karma yoga or the way by which one can attain spiritual perfection while engaging in the work for which he has a natural tendency. You like to paint? No problem. Don't paint for your sense gratification. Take that desire for painting and employ it in the mission of the Lord. So that painting now, that desire that you have, that attraction, that tendency, natural tendency to paint, you can still paint, but paint for the pleasure of Krishna. You like to be a plumber? Very good. You're a handyman? No problem. Um, be a man, handyman in the mission of the Lord. Uh, you like to, uh, you like to, you know, have guns and protect. You know, you into security and safety. No problem. You can do that in the mission of the Lord, serving the mission of the Lord. So everything can be employed um, in the mission of the Supreme Lord. In this way, uh, it becomes uh, karma yoga you can attain spiritual perfection. The conclusion is that when the result of all fruit of and other work is dovetailed with the service of the Lord, it will cease to generate further karma and will gradually develop into transcendental loving, transcendental devotional service, which will not only cut off completely the root of the banyan tree of work, but will also carry the performer to the lotus feet of the Lord. That same activity that you're doing, whether it's your work or whether it's any of the abilities that you have, when you employ that in the service of the Lord, you have to understand it's no more work. It's no more material work. If you say, oh, well, you know, what to do, Prabhu? You know, I have to work. It's like my karmi job, then that means you haven't understood Srila Prabhupada's instructions nicely. If you take that work and you use everything in the service of Krishna, you use your abilities in the service of Krishna, you use the wealth in the service of Krishna, or in raising a Krishna conscious family, it is no more work. It is karma yoga, it is devotional service. If you're still thinking it's work, then that is uh, 
a wrong mentality, which will actually implicate you in not understanding proper instructions and therefore binding you. We have to have faith in what Prabhupada is saying. And if you have faith and you apply yourself like this, you will experience that even your inverted commas in quotes, your karmi job uh, will be blissful. And you'll be able to see it like that with the first verse that we covered. Even if your karmi job is a challenge, and if you see it as Krishna's mercy, it'll be blissful. It's, it's, it cannot be understood with your intelligence. You have to apply this and experience it. Just like many uh, devotees ask me, you know, since, you know, I've been you know, working from 2003 when I uh, left the temple and they would ask me because I was in the temple for uh, 10 years, but 10 years, 13, yeah, 13 years. And then I you know, started working. And then they would ask me, you know, how's it, how's it like the outside? You know, how's it, Prabhu? You know, how's it like a work when you're working? I said, it's blissful. It's no problem. Why? Because of this principle. That if you see your work in relation to Krishna, employing everything in the service of Krishna, using your fruits for the mission of Krishna, it's blissful. That service is devotional service. Your work is devotional service. And you'll have the same experience. It'll be energizing. It'll be wonderful. <clears throat> And as Prabhupada says, not only will it cut the roots of karma, but it will carry the performer to the lotus feet of the Lord. It will take us from being free, to, free of karma to the divine lotus feet uh, of Krishna. So let us try to apply this in our life. Prabhupada is now giving a summary. The summary is that one has to, first of all, seek the association of pure devotees who, are not only, who not only are learned in the Vedanta, but are self-realized souls and unalloyed devotees of Lord Shri Krishna, the personality of Godhead. In that association, the neophyte devotees must render loving service physically and mentally without reservation. This service attitude will induce the great souls to be more favorable in bestowing their mercy, which injects the neophyte with all transcendental qualities of pure devotees, of the pure devotees. Gradually, this is developed into a strong attachment to hearing the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, which makes him able to catch up the constitutional position of the gross and subtle bodies, and beyond them, a knowledge of the pure soul and his eternal relationship with the Supreme Soul, the personality of Godhead. After the relationship is ascertained by establishment of eternal relationship, pure devotional service to the Lord begins gradually developing into perfect knowledge of the personality of Godhead beyond the purview of the impersonal Brahman and localized Paramatma. By such Purushtam Yoga, as it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, one is made perfect even during the present corporal corporeal existence and one exhibits all the good qualities of the Lord to the highest percentage. Such is the gradual development by association of pure devotees. Now Narad Muni was very fortunate. He had the Bhaktivedantas that came to his house and he had the association. Now someone may argue, well, where is our Bhaktivedantas? So who can tell us where is our Bhaktivedantas? Please type in the chat, where is our Bhaktivedantas? Yes, Mother Lesh responded. Prabhupada's purport, purports, in fact, uh, our Bhakti Vedantas is Srila Prabhupada himself, who is named A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami. So, uh, Prabhupada, his name is Bhakti Vedanta. So, we have a Bhakti Vedanta. What about the previous Acharyas? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Samaj, Srila Bhakti Vinatakar, the Goswamis, 
Prabhupada has taken their knowledge, now he studied all their writings, the Goswami's writings, Vishwana Chakravati Thakur, Baladev Vidya Bhushan, their commentaries, assimilated, digested that, and given that to us in Bhaktivedanta purports. So when we are reading the Bhaktivedanta purports, we are associating directly, not only with Srila Prabhupada, but with all the previous Acharyas, all the Bhaktivedantas. And therefore, uh, we have this association. Prabhupada has left ISKCON uh, in terms of the mission. So by serving, the, by, by serving Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON mission, we are also directly serving Srila Prabhupada in the disciplic succession. So there is no lack of association of pure devotees. Srila Prabhupada also by his instruction and association had the power to make other pure devotees. And those who are totally dedicated to following Srila Prabhupada's instructions, cent per cent, who make Srila Prabhupada's uh, mission, their life and soul, then they are also uh, in this category of pure devotees. And by serving them, we will then get the same result that Prabhupada has summarized here. So the opportunity that Narad Muni received, we also have that opportunity. And even if somebody says, well, I don't have pure association, then we should become that pure association. We should follow Srila Prabhupada's instruction, cent per cent, and become pure so that we can give that pure association to those souls that come uh, to Srila Prabhupada's mission and movement. Text 35. Yad atra kriyate kar karma bhagavata paritoshanam jnanam yatat adinam hi bhakti yoga samanvitam. Whatever work is done here in this life for the satisfaction of the mission of the Lord is called bhakti yoga or transcendental loving service to the Lord. And what is called knowledge becomes a concomitant factor. So knowledge becomes secondary. The mission and serving the mission, serving this, the, the, the sense of the Lord for the pleasure of the Lord, uh, that becomes prominent as bhakti yoga. Prabhupada says, and the principle is satisfying the Lord. The general and popular notion is that by discharging fruit of work in terms of the direction of the scriptures, one becomes perfectly able to acquire transcendental knowledge for spiritual realization. So if one is engaged, uh, discharging uh, one's fruit of work uh, in according to scripture, and we've already now covered a few verses by Narad Muni and Prabhupada's purport, how? which means uh, you, whatever you're getting, whatever fruit of work you en en engage in, do that for the pleasure of Krishna. And offer that uh, for the Supreme Lord. When you do that, you get transcendental knowledge. Bhakti yoga is considered by some to be another form of karma. But factually, bhakti yoga is above both karma and gyan. Bhakti yoga is independent of karma or gyan. On the other hand, karma and gyan are dependent on bhakti yoga. So every activity for it to bear fruit needs some percentage of bhakti, of devotion. Knowledge, for knowledge to have impact and effect, it has to have some fraction of bhakti. But bhakti itself is totally independent. You don't need gyan and you don't need karma for bhakti to be perfect. You just need bhakti, you just need devotion. But karma and gyan can help and facilitate, strengthen one's bhakti yoga. This kriya yoga or karma yoga is recommended by Sri Narada Vyas 
is specifically recommended because the principle is to satisfy the Lord. We are constitutionally, eternally servants of the Lord. The duty of the servant is to satisfy the senses of the master. The duty of an employee is to serve the employer. So, right, this is the principle. As servants, our goal, our duty is to satisfy Krishna. The Lord does not want his sons and living beings to suffer the threefold miseries of life. He desires that all of them come to him and live with him. But going back to God, it means that one must purify himself from material infections. And what is this material infections? It is not COVID. This material infection is the desire to lord it over material nature, the desire to enjoy separately from Krishna, the desire to be the proprietor, the desire to be the controller, the desire to be the benefactor, the desire to put yourself in the center instead of Krishna, instead of Srila Prabhupada, instead of the devotees of the Lord. When work is performed, therefore, to satisfy the Lord, the performer becomes gradually purified from the material affection. This purification means attainment of spiritual knowledge. So as soon as you start employing all this in the service of the Lord, you will get spiritual knowledge. Therefore, knowledge is dependent on karma or work done on behalf of the Lord. Other knowledge being devoid of bhakti yoga or satisfaction of the Lord cannot lead one back to the kingdom of God which means that it cannot even offer salvation. As already explained in connection with the stanza, Neshkarmya Apyachuta Bhava Varjitam. The conclusion is that a devotee engaged in the unalloyed service of the Lord, specifically in hearing and chanting of his transcendental glories, becomes simultaneously spiritually enlightened by divine grace, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. So all knowledge that does not connect, right, that's not related to the Supreme Lord is basically useless. But uh, when you work with the proper consciousness, you'll get Krishna conscious knowledge. And that Krishna conscious knowledge will help you uh, to progress, ultimately perfecting your life. So they are, uh, this aspect of karma and gyan, they can... Uh, it's progressive on a journey from mixed bhakti, impure bhakti, mishra bhakti, to pure bhakti, suda bhakti. Our goal is to go to suda bhakti, pure bhakti, prema bhakti. We generally start off, soul start off uh, in the category of what we call adharma bhakti, the lowest. And this adharma bhakti uh, is where we have devotional sentiments, but uh, for comfortable life, for sense gratification, for comfortable uh, living. We then purify our life, progress further to karma mishra bhakti, where uh, we our karma is predominant, but it's mixed with a little bhakti, little chaya bhakti, and this uh, or this is this category is called chaya bhakti. And the goal is heavenly pleasures. People you know, want heavenly pleasure. This, they fall in this category of karma, mishra, bhakti. So there's some bhakti and the goal is heavenly pleasure. Then they progress further, further, further. Then they come to jnana, mishra, bhakti. Predominant knowledge about uh, Krishna consciousness, knowledge about relationship with the Supreme Lord, but little bhakti. So there's little chaya, shadow bhakti, uh, but the goal of knowledge is mukti, liberation. Then one progresses further. Now, before one reaches pure bhakti, unconditional, ananya, unmotivated, uninterrupted, pure devotional service, not mixed with jnana and karma, 
there are different stages also in between here. So we got uh, Adharma Bhakti, then we got Karma Mishra Bhakti, we got Jnana Mishra Bhakti, and then the next stages is Bhakti Mishra Nishkam Karma, which means it's predominant Bhakti, but then it's mixed with Karma, which is Nishkam. That means, yeah, I want to enjoy. Yeah, I have knowledge, but I'm still the enjoyer. When we advance, we then be, understand that I need to put bhakti as prominent and slowly become free from the desire even to enjoy within the process of bhakti. And I simply do what pleases Hari Guru Vaishnavas. And in this way, I slowly progress to pure bhakti. So it's a journey as Prabhupada is encouraging us to understand our position, to understand how we should use everything in the service of Krishna, uh, use uh, all the wealth that we are given for the mission of Krishna consciousness. And by living in this way, constantly trying to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, uh, we very effectively progress on this path of Krishna consciousness. Those who are on this path, of Krishna consciousness striving for pure bhakti are very, very rare. In Chaitan Chatamrita, uh, it is described there by Krishna's Kaviraj Goswami. Dharma chari madhye bahuta karma nishta koti karma nishta madhye eka, eka jnani shrestha koti jnani madhye haya eka jana mukta Koti Mukta Madde Dullaba Eka Krishna Bhakta. Among the followers of Vedic knowledge, the most, most are following the process of fruitive activity and distinguishing between good and bad work. Out of many such sincere fruitive workers, there may be one who is actually wise. Out of many millions of such wise men, one may actually become liberated, mukta. And out of many millions of such liberated persons, a pure devotee of Lord Krishna is very difficult to find. So we can understand what a glorious service Srila Prabhupada is rendering, that he is making millions of pure devotees, those who are sincerely trying to follow Srila Prabhupada's instructions uh, are becoming pure souls and therefore a glorious achievement. Text 36. Kuruvana yatra karmani bhagavach chikshayat shakrit grinanti gunanamani Krishna Syanu Smaranticha, while performing duties according to the order of Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one constantly remembers him, his name and his qualities. So we see these verses are systematically uh, revealing uh, the different stages. Uh, Narad Muni is sharing uh, how we engage everything, uh, the result of it, and by engaging everything, our work, our prescribed work, duties, in uh, the service of Krishna, in the mission of the Supreme Lord, mm -hmm. then automatically we remember Krishna. Why? Because we are doing it for the mission of Krishna. We are doing it for the pleasure of Krishna. So the, in the forefront, it is for Krishna, and therefore we remember Krishna. Prabhupada in the purport says, an expert devotee of the Lord can mold his life in such a way that while performing all kinds of duties, either for this or the next life, he can constantly remember the Lord's name, fame, qualities, etc. The order of the Lord is distinctly there in Bhagavad Gita. One should work only for the Lord in all spheres of life. So 
doesn't matter what one is doing in every sphere of life, there is no exclusion. One can work for the Lord. Prabhupada even went to the extent to say that even someone who's a drunkard, if that's his occupation, he likes to drink, he likes to just get drunk, that's his duty, he thinks that's my duty, that's my life, that's my existence. If he drinks liquor, and we're not advising this, okay? No, we're not suggesting this. Prabhupada is not suggesting this. We want you to follow uh, the divine path, the auspicious path. But even if somebody is on the inauspicious path of drinking liquor, and if he drinks liquor and he thinks, this taste, Krishna says, Rasama Pusakontaya, this taste is Krishna, so nice, Krishna, this taste is so nice, you're so nice, Krishna, you'll become Krishna conscious. It may take him a little longer, but he'll become Krishna conscious. That's the power. I want to talk about somebody who sincerely, faithfully uh, tries to follow Prabhupada's instructions. In every sphere of life, the Lord should be situated as the proprietor. So you see these points repeated emphatically again and again because we need to get it. The problem, uh, one time Srila Prabhupada said, uh, the process of Krishna is so simple that you miss it. So we need to get these points. If we can build, get these points and build the foundation solid, just like when you're cementing and the cement is wet, so you are busy laying the cement. Uh, you want to lay the cement and make sure everything is nice before it hardens, because once it's hard, that's it. It's solid or concrete. So like that, when we lay this foundation nice and solid, uh, then our Krishna consciousness will flourish and be blissful. According to Vedic rites, even in the worship of some demigods like Indra, Brahma, Saraswati, and Ganesh, the system is that in all circumstances, the representation of Vishnu must be there as Yagneshwar or the controlling power of such sac sac sacrifices. It is recommended that a particular demigod be worshipped for a particular purpose, but still the presence of Vishnu is compulsory in order to make the function proper. When there's a ceremony to worship any of these demigods, then the priest will install uh, a, there's a coconut right in front. That coconut is representing Vishnu, Yagneshwar. So he actually chants certain mantras of glorifying Vishnu first, establishing the deity of Vishnu, and then uh, the fire, uh, which is the mouth uh, of uh, the Lord, uh, that's how the Lord eats, through uh, the mouth, uh, through the fire. So in that way, uh, this is how Vishnu is installed, and then the demigod that is there for the specific ceremony is then worshipped. So like that, even with the demigods, Krishna is Vishnu is principal. For us, also in every activity, Krishna needs to be principal. Apart from such Vedic duties, even in our ordinary dealings, for example, in our household affairs or in our business or profession, we must consider that the result of all activities must be given over to the supreme enjoyer, Lord Krishna. So it doesn't matter. Household affairs, business, profession, can see properties, what else is there? It's either your household, it's either your business, or it's either your profession. There's nothing else in life. So all these things, uh, we should understand the supreme enjoyer is Krishna. Bring Krishna into the fold. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord has declared himself to be the supreme enjoyer of everything, the supreme proprietor of every planet and the supreme friend of all beings. No one else but Lord Sri Krishna can claim to be the proprietor of everything within his creation. A pure devotee remembers this constantly. And in doing so, he repeats the transcendental name, fame, and qualities of the Lord, which means that he's constantly in touch with the Lord. The Lord is identical with his name, fame, etc. And therefore, to be associated with his name, fame, etc. constantly means actually to associate with the Lord. And one who's associated with the Lord is in Vaikuntha. 
is in the spiritual world. In Bhagavad Gita also, the Lord told Arjuna, Mam Anusmara Yudhyacha. Think of me, think of Krishna, think of me, and carry out your prescribed duty as a warrior. So fight and think of me. Do your household affairs and think of Krishna. Do your business and think of Krishna. Do your profession and think of Krishna. Oh, how am I going to think of Krishna? You can think of Krishna because Krishna is the proprietor of your house. He is the landlord of your business. Of your, he's, he's, the, he's, he's given you all the abilities, the skills of your profession. The, re, re, uh, the remuneration, the wealth that you're going to get, the paycheck you're going to get is coming from Krishna. It's his wealth. So you'll find so many ways you can link back to Krishna because he is the proprietor, he's the boss, ultimate boss. Uh, you may have a boss, he may have a boss, he may have the boss, but the ultimate boss is Krishna. You could even say his boss, his boss, his boss, ultimate boss is death because everybody bows down to death. You're going to bow down. This boss, this boss, this boss, and the main boss, death. And who is death? It's Krishna. So for those that don't accept Krishna as a supreme personality of God, they bow down to death, Krishna in the form of death. But those who accept Krishna, uh, they bow down to the supreme personality of God, the divine form of Krishna, Shamsundar, uh, holding a flute. Then Prabhupada continues, the major portion of our monetary income, not less than 50%, must be sent, must be spent, to carry out the order of, the, of Lord Krishna. Not only should we give the profit of our earning to this cause, but we must also arrange to preach this cult of devotion to others, because that is also one of the orders of the Lord. So also very, very important. Whatever wealth we have, uh, we should use it to become Krishna conscious, and we should employ uh, Robert said, not less than 50%. Now, Maya, obviously, uh, understanding this principle, or you could say Kali, Kali understanding the age of, this age is predominant, is that the personification of this age is managed by Kali. And this uh, personality of Kali, who practically wants to destroy everyone and Krishna consciousness, uh, they already have an upper hand because you have to practically pay like 40% to the government. So already uh, you have less to give to Krishna. Uh, but even after giving 40%, we should try our best to give as much as possible. The reason why this 50% is there in scripture, a devotee who's dedicated his life cent percent, like someone in the temple, they don't get any, any reaction. A sannyasi who's dedicated his life, cent percent, according to the instructions of Srila Prabhupada and living by those instructions, he gets no reaction. But someone who is a householder, uh, because they're involved in different occupations and this karmic reaction involved, uh, for them to nullify all the reaction, scripture says you have to give 50%. If you give 50%, then also you get freed from all that karmic reaction, right? So that is why the principle is there. Now, yes, it may not be practical, but the point is uh, give as much as you can for what? For carrying out the mission of the Lord. And especially uh, preaching the cult of Krishna consciousness to others. Very, very important. It's our duty. We're not meant to be, uh, you know, just a movement where we only interested in our own welfare. We are interested in the welfare of all living entities. Therefore, we want to save ourselves and we want to save everyone out there. The Lord definitely says that no one is more dear to me than one who is always engaged in, preach, in the preaching work of the Lord's name and fame all over the world. The scientific discoveries of the material world 
can also be equally engaged in carrying out his order. And we see Prabhupada used every facility that was available to him for spreading Krishna consciousness. And I gave the example of the internet because we weren't using that effectively. Krishna made arrangements so that we can now use technology in the service of Krishna. At the same time, we should not forget that association is powerful and we need that associate, physical association. He wants the message of Bhagavad Gita to be preached amongst these devotees. It may not be so done amongst those who have no credit of austerity, charity, and education. Therefore, the attempt must go on, convert unwilling men, become his devotees. So we can see how Prabhupada's mission is very, very clear. Our duty is to invite new souls. Our duty is to invite those who are unwilling uh, to become devotees. We need to give them the mercy expertly, nicely. We have to learn. And Prabhupada gave the formula. Uh, in fact, Prabhupada is going to tell us the formula, even in uh, these purports, how to bring people into the fold. Prabhupada says, Lord Chaitanya has taught a very simple method in this connection. He has taught the lesson for preaching the transcendental message through singing, dancing, and refreshments. That's it. That's the process. Singing, dancing, and refreshments. Oh, that's a party. Wonderful. So if you invite people, hey, we have a party. Who's not going to come? Excellent feast. Dancing and chanting. People are going to come. Yes, they may have to learn the song we're going to sing, but that's okay. When we have uh, retreats, we would tell the students, uh, where can you have clean fun and that you can really enjoy chanting, dancing, and feasting without any hangovers, uh, without any karmic reaction, without any side effects, where you can get high and you can stay high forever. So this is available. This is the process. We simply have to do this. And we read in Lilamrita so many places, Prabhupada said that if he's got money, he would have a festival every single day. We wait for a festival. And then even then we may not be involved or, you know, we don't take it seriously. But Srila Prabhupada said that if he had money, he would have a festival every day. Not just once a year, Janmastami or Gorpunim or two times a year. No, every single day, probably have a festival. And what's that festival involving? Singing, dancing, and refreshments. And probably would say, little philosophy. We chant, we have a little some uh, knowledge of the Supreme Lord. And in this way, uh, we invite people, we have this, this is all we have to do. And the process will have impact on the souls that are there. As such, 50% of our income may be spent for this purpose. So this is why we should be giving donations for this purpose and for this purpose only. I remember when uh, we set up the, 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 the new center in Madren, this is all we did. The festival was simply chanting, dancing, refreshments, and little philosophy uh, with drama. And people became uh, attracted by this process. It's a very scientific. In this fallen age of quarrel and decession, if only the leading and wealthy persons of society agree to spend 50% of their income in the service of the Lord, as it is taught by Lord Shijan Mahaprabhu, there is absolute certainty of converting this hell of uh, pandemonium to the transcendental abode of the Lord. So yes, it's hellish. And if we can, one at a time, they say one soul at a time. So yes, maybe everyone cannot do it. It's, in practice, it's impossible because we have to get to everyone. But at least one at a time. If each one of us are convinced one at a time, and then we can convince one soul at a time. You know, Krishna's made the perfect network marketing strategy. 
Shi Jinmabu has made the perfect network marketing strategy where everyone can benefit. Uh, there is no exploitation. Everyone can sing, dance, and have refreshments and be happy. And not only that, the commission structure is also well paid. Excellent commission structure. Even if you don't want it, it gets deposited in your bank account by bringing souls. Because why Prabhupada says uh, that if you connect souls, Krishna uh, loves that. Krishna uh, rewards that tremendously. Everyone, Prabhupada says, uh, no one will disagree to partake in a function where good singing, dancing, and refreshments are administered. Okay, so it's very important, probably saying good singing, dancing, and refreshments. It's not that we just do the program for the sake of doing the program because it's our duty to do the program. No. We have to find the best singers, the best dancers, the best cooks, the best hosts, and put them in the front uh, so that uh, those who come will get the best experience. If we have to be those in the back that are you know, supporting these people who are in the front, then so be it. Just like in an army, uh, you have those soldiers who know how to you know, protect the best, they in front. And we have a support team that's supporting the army, uh, cooking, making arrangements, medical aid, etc. cetera. Uh, they're all in the same mission. So this is how we should arrange. Everyone will attend such a function. So if we dedicate our life for this mission, probably saying everyone will attend such a function. That means everyone. There may be somebody who's completely skeptical. He's not interested. He may be totally demonic. He's not interested. Probably saying everyone will attend such a function, meaning that he will attend sooner or later. Why? He's going to see, oh, my friend just attended. Hmm. Interest. Anyway, I'm not interested. Oh. My family member attended. Nah, I'm not interested. Hey, everyone on my street attended. My God, I'm the only one. He just said, my God. See, he's slowly getting purified. I'm the only one that's attending, uh, that's not attending. I, I don't want to miss out. Something's happening there. I better go find out. Anyway, I'll go just, I'll check it out. I'll just go to check what's out. I'm not interested. I'm just going to go check what's up. So he comes. As soon as he comes, he has to hear the holy name. He has to be in, he has to see the devotees explained just by seeing the tilak to become purified. That's why we wear tilak. Just by seeing the Vaishnav dress, they become purified. Just by coming into the atmosphere, they get purified. They cannot go without prasad. They'll get purified. So everyone will attend such a function. And everyone is sure to feel individually the transcendental presence of the Lord. So it is our duty. It is our mission. It is our purpose. It is our life to try to fulfill uh, Srila Prabhupada's instructions in this purport. This alone will help the attendant associate, associate with the Lord and thereby purify him in spiritual realization. Just by doing this, the process will do everything else. The only condition, now Prabhupada is putting a kite for this to be effective. The only condition for successfully executing such spiritual activities is that they must be conducted under the guidance of a pure devotee he is completely free from all mundane desires fruitive activities, and dry speculation about the nature of the Lord. Because as soon as you bring in the agenda for me and my, you spoil everything. And that we already covered in the first few purports today.
No one has to discover the nature of the Lord. It is already spoken by the Lord himself in Bhagavad Gita, especially, especially and in all other Vedic literatures generally. We have simply to accept them in total and abide by the orders of the Lord. That will guide us to the path of perfection. One can remain in his own position. No one has to change his position, especially in this age of variegated difficulties. The only condition is that one must give up the habit of dry speculation aimed at becoming one with the Lord. And after giving up such lofty puffed up vanities, one may very submissively receive the orders of the Lord in Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam from the lips of a bona fide devotee whose qualification is mentioned above. That will make everything successful without a doubt. So the formula is very clear. The formula for our own perfection and the formula for our mission to be, to be perfect. The problem is we. The problem is our desires to exploit. Prabhupada is giving the blessings. Prabhupada is giving the foresight. Prabhupada is giving the formula. Everything is there. We simply have to accept. Toto. I was using this word. Toto. As it is. Don't add. Don't subtract. Just do as Prabhupada is instructing. And everything will be successful without a doubt. Prabhupada himself proved it. You know, devotees have experience of it. We simply have to follow. So in the 10th canto, third chapter, verse 31 purport, uh, Prabhupada shares with us uh, different stages of progression. As we're mentioning, uh, we're coming from this lower territory of exploiting. And then as we get association of devotees, uh, we start uh, engaging, hearing and chanting, uh, we become purified. So these different stages are explained by Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur. Uh, I'll just read and then I'll just explain this. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Bhaktiya Mamre Bijanati Yavan Yes Chasmi Tattvataha. And as confirmed in Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhaktiya Ham Ekaya Graha. Grahaya. Without bhakti, one cannot understand the spiritual situation of the Lord. Bhakti may be considered in three stages called Guni Bhuta, Pradhani Bhuta, and Kevala. And according to these stages, there are three divisions which are called Gyan, Gyanamai, and Rati. So I explained uh, going from Karma, then Karma Mishra Bhakti, uh, then Jnana Mishra Bhakti, and then Pure Bhakti. So now uh, we're explaining those different stages uh, in between there. Guna Bhakti, uh, Pradhani Bhuta, and Kevala. And these uh, divisions, which are called Jnana, Jnana Mai, and Rati. This is simple knowledge, love mixed with knowledge, and pure love. So the lower categories was, for example, knowledge, then knowledge mixed with love, okay? and then we get uh, love mixed with knowledge, so, uh, or, or even love mixed with karma. So the love becomes more prominent. In the beginning, it's the karma that's more prominent, fructive work, uh, I'm a doctor, uh, I know more, I know everything, that's prominent. Then slowly, bhakti becomes prominent. Uh, I'm simply a devotee of Krishna. I don't know anything. So devotion becomes prominent. Karma and knowledge becomes secondary. By simple knowledge, one can perceive transcendental bliss without variety. This perception is called mana bhuti. When one comes to the stage of jnanamai, one realizes the transcendental opulence, opulences of the Supreme Personality of God. But when one reaches pure love, one realizes the transcendental form of the Lord is Lord Krishna or Lord Ram. This is what is wanted. 
especially in the Madhurya Ras, one becomes attached to the personality of God at Sri Vikra Nishta Rupadi. Then loving transactions between the Lord and the devotee begins. So we have the Karmi Yogi who progresses to Jnana Yogi, who progresses to Dhyana Yogi. They all get Brahma Jyoti uh, after they have added uh, Bhakti in their sadhana. Okay, so little bhakti will then give them the des desired destination, which is merging into defulgence. But if one progresses further, uh, then one comes to guna bhuta bhaktas, which uh, where your devotion is less than 50% and you still get the Brahma Jyoti. Then uh, you come to pradhani bhuta bhaktas, where your devotion now is more than 50%, uh, and you have knowledge of the Lord's opulence. So then you go to Vaikuntha. Uh, our goal, Srila Prabhupada's desire, our disciplic succession, they are giving us an opportunity to come and become Kevala Bhaktas, Sudha Bhakti, 100% pure devotion, with uh, no awe and reverence, simply intimacy. That's Koloka Vrindavan, uh, with pure devotion. Uh, we, in our line, can develop the most intimate relationship with the Supreme Personality of God. So this is the result. This is the opportunity that we have. And it's very easy. It's very simple. If we understand the result that we have, such glorious result that we can get simply by following Shiloh Prabhupada's instruction, that the price you have to pay is totally insignificant compared to the reward that we get. It's a no-brainer, as they say. Uh, the reward to the, uh, to the risk or the, uh, what you're putting in, right? the effort that you have to put in, what you need to do is, is practically insignificant in terms of uh, the result. What you're sacrificing, what you have to give up um, is totally, totally insignificant compared to what you're going to receive. So that was this first section. Now from 37 to 40, Narad Muni is going to share uh, these concluding verses and focusing sound vibration is important. Text 37. Om Namo, so now Narad Muni is giving his own mantra. Om Namo Bhagavate Tubyam Vasudeva Yadimahi Pradyumna Pradyumnaya Nirodaya Nama Sankarshanaya Cha. Let us all chant the glories of Vasudev along with his plenary expansions Pradyumna, Aniruda, and Sankarshan. So these are concluding verses, last three concluding verses. And therefore, he's speaking to Vyasadev, and now he's encouraging. Shila Vyasadev and encouraging all of us, let us glorify Krishna. Let us put Krishna there in front. Uh, we've wasted lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes putting ourselves, putting our senses, putting our mind, putting everything, everybody else in front and still landing up in a mess, still unhappy, still dissatisfied. So now let us understand uh, the solution. Let us put Krishna. Uh, and Krishna's expansions. Let us glorify them. Uh, let us uh, put them in the forefront. Prabhupada in the purport uh, uses uh, this word, the four aides at uh, the camp. I had to look up that. I read it as, oh, what is this? Okay, so I looked it up. Uh, and uh, four aides the camp means a military officer acting. So aides. I don't know if I'm spelling, spelling that or pronouncing it correctly, but Aidas the camp, a military officer acting as a confidential assistant to a senior officer. So probably saying uh, that uh, these personalities, Pradyumna, Sankarshan, Vasudeva, Niruda, uh, they are military officers acting as confidential assistants of Lord Krishna. Robert writes, according to Pancharatra, Narayan is the primal cause of all the expansions of God. These are Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradhyumna, and Aniruddha. Vasudev and Sankarshan are on the 
middle left and right. Pradyumna is on the right of Sankarshan and Aniruddha is on the left of Vasudeva. And thus the four deities are situated. They are known as the four Aedas, the camp of Lord Shri Krishna. This is a Vedic, Vedic hymn or mantra beginning with Omkar Pravana, pr Pranava, and thus the mantra is established by the transcendental chanting process, namely Om Namo Dimahi, etc. So Prabhupada is explaining the position of these personalities. Mm -hmm. Generally, you would say Pradyumna, Sankarshan, Vasudev, and Aniruddha in terms of position. So Vasudev and Sankarshan uh, are on the middle left and right. So they're in the middle, okay, positioned this way. Then Pradyumna is on the right of Sankarshan. So this is Sankarshan. Uh, this is his right hand side. And on the right hand side is Pradyumna. And Aniruddha is on the left of Vasudev. So here's Vasudev. And this is the left of Vasudev, which means Aniruddha is on the left. So this is generally the sequence when you call these, these personalities, these four quadruple personalities, and we covered them uh, in previous chapters as well. Pradyumna, Sankarshan, Vasudev, Aniruddha. So I'll just briefly cover who these four personalities are, and then we'll cover uh, the sequence in this specific verse. So Pradyuna is Krishna's son. Sankarshan is Krishna's brother, Balaram. Vasudev is Krishna himself. And Aniruddha is Krishna's grandson. And these are uh, the four Chaturvuya, first four expansions from Balaram, and then further expansions manifest. Now in this specific verse that Narumuni is chanting, he says, Om Namo Bhagavata Tupyam Vasudevaya Dimahi. He's offering obeisances to Vasudev. And then he says, Pradumna Ya Nirudaya Nama Sankarshana Cha. He first says Pradumna, then he says Aniruddha, and then he says Sankarshan. So he doesn't say Pradumna Sankarshan Vasudev Aniruddha. He says Pradumna, Aniruddha, and Sakarsha in that sequence. And Srila Vishnu Chakravati Thakur gives different reasons for the sequence. And one of the reasons he gives is because it's aligned with the creation. Pradumna is in charge of creation, so creation first. Then Aniruddha, second, he maintains. And then Sankarshan destroys. Okay, so in that sequence, therefore, in this verse, it's Pradumna, Aniruddha, Sankarshan in that sequence. And it's also interesting that Pradyumna, uh, he empowers Lord Brahma for creation. Aniruddha, uh, he empowers Vishnu for maintenance. And Sankarshan empowers Lord Shiva for destruction. Prabhupada says the most confidential instruction. And Bafana Prabhu wanted uh, to know the most confidential instruction for today. So here it is. The purport is that any transaction, either in the field of fruit of work or in empiric, empiric philosophy, which is not ultimately aimed at transcendental realization of the Supreme, of the Supreme Lord, is considered to be useless. Naraji has therefore explained the nature of unalloyed devotional service by his personal experience in the development of intimacy between the Lord and the living entity by a gradual process of progressive devotional activities. So it is gradual, but it is progressive. Such a progressive march of transcendental devotion of the Lord culminates in the attainment of loving service of the Lord, which is called prema in different transcendental variegatedness called rasas or tastes. Such devotional service is also executed in mixed forms, which we've explained, namely mixed with fruit of work or empiric philosophical speculation. Now the question which was raised by the great rishis 
headed by Shonaka regarding the confidential part of Sutta's achievement through the spiritual master is explained herein by chanting of the hymns associated consisting of 32, 32 uh, sorry, 33 letters. And this mantra is addressed to the four deities or the Lord with his plenary expansions. The central figure is Lord Shri Krishna because plenary portions are his aid is the camp. The most confidential part of the instruction is that one should always chant and remember the glories of Lord Shri Krishna, Supreme Personality of God, along with his different plenary portions expanded as Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradumna, and Aniruddha. Those expansions are the original deities of all other truths, namely either Vishnu Tattva or Shakti Tattva. So the most confidential instruction is to always chant and remember the glories of Lord Krishna and his expansions. And this is what Shilavya, uh, Narad Muni is telling Shilavyasadeva. And this is how the Bhagavatam unfolds. And this is why the Bhagavatam is simply focusing on this point, glorifying and chanting and remembering the glories of Lord Krishna. Text 38. Iti murtya bidan nena mantra murtim amurtikam yajate yagna purusham sasam yag darshana pumam. Thus, he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation, the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu, who has no material form. Thus, he is the actual seer who worships in the form of transcendental sound representation, the Supreme Personality of God at Vishnu, who has no material form. So Krishna, Vishnu does not have a material form. Their form is totally spiritual. And how can you see the spiritual form? How can you worship the spiritual form? In the form of transcendental sound. When you meet someone, when you introduce someone to your friend, you uh, your, you may see the form, you may see the person, but you get to know the person first through a name. Oh, my friend, this is so and so. You introduce the name first. So you introduce sound first. Therefore, we worship the Supreme Lord in the form of sound representation. Prabhupada has given us the sound representation of Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. We are given the name of Krishna, the sound of Krishna, the form of transcendental sound first. Why? Because we are envious of Krishna. We've been envious of Krishna lifetimes over lifetimes. If Krishna has to personally appear in front of us, due to that envy, we will uh, blaspheme him and reject him. Therefore, the sound of Krishna is first introduced, which goes into our ear very quickly and purifies us. When that sound enters, even though we envious, the holy name is happy to enter. And we don't feel threatened. Our envy doesn't block us too much from embracing Krishna in the form of sound. And that slowly purifies us to then eventually embrace Krishna completely. Prabhupada in the purport says, our present senses are all made of material elements and therefore they are imperfect in realizing the transcendental form of Lord Vishnu. So we don't have the right eyes to see Krishna. He is therefore worshipped by sound representation via the transcendental method of chanting. Anything which is beyond the scope of experience 
by our imperfect senses can be realized fully by the sound representation. Anything which is beyond the scope of our experience, of experience by our imperfect senses, because we cannot see Krishna due to our imperfect senses, doesn't mean we cannot see Krishna. That bridge, that connection, that shortfall can be resolved by the sound representation of Krishna. Just like I may not see a police car coming, but just by the siren of the police car, I can understand, oh yes, ambulance or police car is coming. I may not see someone asking for help, but as soon as I hear the sound, help, help, I know somebody's asking for help. So the sound bridges us. Another point is creation starts with sound. And from sound, we're going to cover that in the third canto, how creation evolves very systematically, but it starts off with sound. Similarly, Prabhupada says, if you reverse the process using sound, you can liberate yourself. So sound is really that link. They say in the Bible, in the beginning was the word. Sound, word, sound, vibration. So that's the sound. A person transmitting sound from a far distant place can be factually experienced. If this is materially possible, why not spiritually? This experience is not vague, impersonal experience. It is actual, actually an experience of, of the transcendental personality of God who possesses the pure form of eternity, bliss, and knowledge. So when you chant Hare Krishna mantra, know for certain, guaranteed, absolutely, you are associating directly with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the form of sound. In the Amara, uh, in the Amara Kosha Sanskrit Dictionary, the word Murti carries import in twofold meaning, namely form and difficulty. Therefore, a Murtikam is explained by Acharya Sri Vishwana Chakravati Thakur as meaning without difficulty. The transcendental form of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses, which can be revived by chanting the holy mantras or transcendental sound representations. I'll read it again. The transcendental form of, the eter of eternal bliss and knowledge can be experienced by our original spiritual senses. So we got spiritual senses. We got original spiritual senses. And with those spiritual senses, we can perceive Krishna. To revive those spiritual senses, we chant the holy mantras, the holy name of the Lord, transcendental sound representation. So when we're chanting, what we're really doing is associating with Krishna. That is purifying us and reviving our spiritual senses. And when our spiritual senses are revived, we will be able to see Krishna and relate with Krishna. This sound should be received from the transparent agency of a bona fide spiritual master. And the chanting may be practiced by the direction of the spiritual master. So here is the criteria. We must receive the sound by the spiritual master, bona fide spiritual master. That ticked. We're given that. Prabhupada is the bona fide acharya. Coming in line. We got the Ma Mantra directly coming from Srila Prabhupada uh, through the disciplic succession. Ticked. Then Prabhupada says, uh, and the chanting may be practiced by the direction of the spiritual master. Prabhupada has given us many directions on how to chant nicely, attentively. We do this in our Japa Shraya course. Uh, we learn, Prabhupada says, that we must learn the art of chanting. So Prabhupada has given us sufficient advice and instructions on how to master the art of chanting. That will gradually lead us nearer to the Lord. This method of worship is recommended in the Pancharatrika system, which is both recognized and authorized. The Pancharatrika system has the most authorized codes for transcendental devotional service. Without help of such codes, one cannot approach the Lord, certainly not by dry philosophical speculation. 
Pancharatrika system is both practical and suitable for this age of quarrel. The Pancharatrika is more important than the Vedanta for this modern age. So what is this Pancharatrika? This Pancharatrika is deity worship. Prabhupada is saying deity worship and chanting the holy name and glories of Krishna both need to go hand in hand. When you worship the deities and you glorify and chant Hare Krishna and preach, they are two tracks of our pathway uh, to the spiritual world. They both help us. So therefore, uh, this is extremely important. Narad Muni gave us the Pancharatrika system. And this statement that Narad Muni says in this verse, Sa samyak darshana puma. Darshana also means to see. Darshana also means philosophy. So Vyasadeva, Narad Muni is telling Shila Vyasadeva, you gave Vedanta darshan. You gave the Vedanta philosophy. And after giving Vedanta philosophy, you're not satisfied. I gave Pancharatrika darshan. I gave, you know, everything about deity worship comes from Narad Muni. And I'm very satisfied. Therefore, it's very practical. Uh, glorify the Lord. You're able to see the form of the Lord. You'll be able to worship the form of the Lord and you'll be happy. So this is Narad Muni's instruction. Now, in relation to sound, sound is extremely powerful. Uh, in many ways, sound is, as said, the first element that enters into the spiritual world. Krishna creates through sound and uh, everything manifests through sound. So every part of creation is impacted by sound vibration. There's uh, this uh, researcher, science, uh, scientist researcher, uh, Masuro Omoto, who uh, researched the power of sound on water. And he took samples. Uh, this is, for example, a sample from a normal dam. And he crystallizes the water, and then he, with microscope, he looks at the structure of that water. And he sees it's very destructive. Then uh, he went near a Buddhist monastery. And he got them, a, there was a body of water there, he got them to pray. And then he took those, uh, that water, crystallized it, and he saw the crystallized formation. And like this, he did many experiments of different words, you know, um, different song, sounds, um, angry words, um, spiritual words on, that have impact on water to show that water, uh, that to show that sound has a very powerful impact on the nature of water. Wonderful, beautiful words like thank you, kind, blessings, you know, what to talk about spiritual sound, right? Just normal words have a beautiful impact on the crystallization of water. Whereas uh, harsh words, you know, angry words have a destructive nature on water. Now, what's interesting is our body is 80% water. So we're practically living surrounded by 80% water. Therefore, the words that we hear the words that we utter have a very powerful impact on the molecular structure of the body in terms of water. And that also impacts our consciousness. That is why Srila Vyasadeva is recommending that we should hear and glorify the Supreme Lord and his qualities and pastimes because that will have a transcendental imprint on the water uh, on water and everything that surrounds our consciousness and uh, the whole environment uh, will have an transcendent, will have a transcendent impact. And that will also uh, have a spiritual impact on ourselves. Uh, here's a, uh, two pictures uh, just to prove this point of the power of sound vibration. These pictures are from a machine which is called a skew machine. I did this experiment uh, 
when I was in the Midrand Temple 2012, I think around that time. And one of the congregation as a Christian lady, uh, she came to the temple and uh, you know, we had a discussion and I got to know her and she had a, a skewer machine. And I you know, heard about the skewer machine, it's like a 250,000 rand machine, very expensive machine. And I asked her if I could use this machine because I wanted to prove you know, a point prove proper statements because if chanting purifies our consciousness purifies the atmosphere we should be able to see it so i you know i don't want to go into the details just briefly i went there hooked up the machine and i didn't tell her anything she's new she doesn't know about krishna consciousness she's you know just getting into it and uh, we went to a house and did a scan so the machine did a scan, hooked me up, uh, just me as you know, normal, just me there uh, early in the morning. And you can see that's my aura, right? Uh, you can see these grayish or bluish patches. Uh, these are negative energies still around me. And then I said, okay, I'm going to chant for five minutes and then you do a rescan. So she said, okay. So I chanted for five minutes the Hare Krishna mantra. Actually, I was focusing and I was attentive, uh, praying, and I was chanting for five minutes. And after five minutes, she did another scan. And now you can see all these negative imprints uh, vanish from my aura. You can see the brilliance of the aura, far more powerful and you know, practically expanding. You can even see, here you'll see just the one form. Here you see another form. So we can see the impact just of five minutes of chanting on the aura. Prabhupada said, if you chant in Kirtan, uh, you perform all the eight limbs of Astanga Yoga. So here we can see the power of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra on uh, the energy around us. Then uh, she also did a scan. So the, the machine does many uh, when the before and after there's many facets to it in terms of your vitals etc so uh, if you see before my five minute chanting you can see the my chakras and the different chakras that are there you know big and small not aligned and then after five minutes of chanting look at the chakras all practically the same size and they're all aligned this is the power of sound vibration chanting Hare Krishna glorifying Krishna. Five minutes. What to talk about uh, if we really dedicate our life to this process? Mm -hmm. What Prabhupada is saying, it's a gradual process elevating ourselves to associating with the Supreme Personality of God. This is, uh, this is uh, perfectly in line with Prabhupada's uh, statements. Then second last verse for today, text 39. Imam swanigamam brahman avetya mat anustitam adan me gyanam aishwaryam sma swamin bhavam chakeshava. O Brahmana, thus by the Supreme Lord Krishna, I was endowed first with transcendental knowledge of the Lord as inculcated in the confidential part of the Vedas, then the spiritual opulences, and then his intimate loving service. So these are some of the results that we will also get in Krishna consciousness. Prabhupada says, Com a communion with the Lord by transmission of transcendental sound is non-different from the whole spirit, Lord Shri Krishna. So by chanting Hare Krishna, we are directly in communication, in link with the Supreme Lord. Why? Because the sound vibration of Krishna, the holy name of Krishna is non-different from Krishna. It is completely perfect. It is, it is a completely perfect method for approaching the Lord. 
So this is the complete perfect process. This is the method. We should embrace it. By such pure contact with the Lord, without offense of material conceptions, numbering 10, that means the 10 offenses, avoiding the 10 offenses, the devotee can rise above the material plane to understand the inner meaning of the Vedic literatures, including the Lord's existence in the transcendental realm. The Lord reveals his identity gradually to one who has unflinching faith, both in the spiritual master and in the Lord. After this, devotees endowed with mystic opulences, which are eight in number, and above all, the devotee is accepted in the confidential entourage of the Lord and is entrusted with specific service of the Lord through the agency of the spiritual master. A pure devotee is more interested in serving the Lord than in showing an exhibition of mystic powers dormant, dormant in him. Shinarada has explained all these form, all these from his personal experience, and one can obtain all the facilities which Sri Narada obtained by perfectly chanting, by perfectly chanting. By, sorry, by perfecting the chanting process of sound representation of the Lord. I'll repeat it again. And one can obtain all the facilities. And what are all the facilities? Transcendental knowledge of the Lord, Gyanam, Aishwarya, all the spiritual opulences and the eight mystic powers, and uh, Swamim Bhavan, his intimate loving service. All these uh, can be obtained. All, for, all the facilities which see Narada obtained by perfecting the chanting process of the sound representation of the Lord. There is no bar for chanting this transcendental sound by anyone, provided it is received through Narada's representative coming down by the chain of discipline succession of the Parampara system. We are receiving it through the Parapara system. Therefore, everyone is no bar for that uh, everyone can actually benefit from this process. So we see that even though Narad Muni received great knowledge and mystic powers, it, that was not the focus. That was, by the way, byproducts. Uh, the focus was the intimate, loving relationship with Krishna service. And we can also get that simply by the holy name, chanting the holy name, perfecting this process of chanting and uh, hearing uh, the glories of Krishna. Last verse, text 40. Brahmapya Bhadra Shruta Vishrutam Vibho Sammapyateye Navidam Bhubhut Sitam Prakya Akya hidu kair muhur arditat maman sak sanklesh nirvanam ushan tinan yatam. Please, therefore, describe the Almighty Lord's activities, which you have learnt by your vast knowledge of the Vedas, for that will satisfy the hankering, hankerings of great learned men and at the same time mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people who are always suffering from material pangs. Indeed, there is no other way to get out of such miseries. So concluding verse, Narad Muni is now instructing Shilavyasade what he must do. He is capable, uh, he is learned, and he can do this task. And if he does this, glorify Give Shrimad Bhagavatam. It is, it will satisfy the hankering of great learned men and it will mitigate the miseries of the masses of common people. And there is no other way. Which is uh, what we started with in the beginning of this session. Uh, that glorifying the Supreme Lord uh, is the only option. All other remedies uh, will not be effective in completely eradicating all suffering for all men. Robert's purport, beautiful. Sri Narad Muni 
from practical experience definitely asserts that the prime solution for all problems of material work is to broadcast very widely the transcendental glories of the Supreme Lord. This is our duty. There are four classes of good men and there are four classes of bad men also. The four classes of good men acknowledged by the authority of the Almighty and therefore, uh, and therefore such good men, one, when they are in difficulty, when they are in need of money, when they are in, when they are advanced in knowledge and when they are inquisitive to know more and more about God, inquisitively take shelter of the Lord. As such, Naraji advises Vyasa Dev to broadcast the transcendental knowledge of the Lord in terms of the vast Vedic knowledge, which he had already attained. So Srimad Bhagavatam is very, very wonderful for those who are in difficulty, for those who want money, for those who want, who are inquisitive and those who want knowledge of the Supreme Lord, for the for good type of people. It's extremely beneficial, extremely conducive for them. Then, as far as bad men are concerned, they are also four in number. One, those who are simply addicted to the mode of progressive fruit of work and thus are subjected to, uh, the, to uh, the accompanying miseries. Two, those who are simply addicted to vicious work of, for sense gratification and so suffer the consequence. Three, for those who are materially very much advanced in knowledge but who suffer because they do not have the sense to acknowledge the authority of the Almighty Lord. And four, the class of men who are known as atheists and who are therefore purposely and, and who therefore purposely hate the very name of God, although they are always in difficulty. So these are the four types of people, like the demigod worshippers, those who are into fruit of work, uh, those who are in a sense, the karmis who are into sense enjoyment. Uh, then the Gyanis um, who are interested in knowledge but uh, reject the authority of the Supreme Lord, and then the atheists. So what about these people? Shinarji advises Vyasadev to describe the glories of the Lord just to do good to all eight classes of men, both good and bad. Srimad Bhagavatam is therefore not meant for any particular class of men or sect. It is for the sincere soul who actually wants his own welfare and peace of mind. All these for good and all these for bad people are interested in their own welfare and peace of mind. So Srimad Bhagavatam is for all eight categories of people. And it is our duty who have received this solution, this only solution, uh, this is the true vaccine that we should be broadcasting to every soul out there. We should be taking this vaccine and we should be broadcasting this vaccine to uh, eliminate every single form of misery and more than that, to revive our eternal intimate relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the fifth can first canto, fifth chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled Nara's Instructions on Srimad Bhagavatam for Vyasadeva. Vantrat Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai shilvavapad ki jai samaveta bhaktivanda ki jai nitai gokamande. Next week we will cover canto one, chapter six, uh, verses one to 10. Are there any questions or comments, I will allow you to unmute as well if you want to unmute or you can type. All right, let's see. So Bhavana says, I took my car to Nature Temple and asked a priest that he helps me dedicate my, dedicate the car to the Lord and still I see it as Krishna's, wonderful. When, uh, when, when, the, when guests would come to the Madran temple to do car puja, so I would do the car puja, right, and purify the car, and then I would tell them, so now the car is purified. Huh? I'm not sure about the driver. So if you meet an accident, don't blame me. Car is okay. Don't know about the driver. 
So if you want to, you know, if you want true safety, the driver also needs to purify himself. Then I tell him how to chant Hare Krishna. So please share the story uh, again of the snake and the ants. So you, you can uh, repeat, you, it'll be recorded. You can hear it again, but basically, uh, 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 basically, it's uh, somebody, ex the guru exploiting and the ants are biting. So you can learn, uh, go over that again on the recording. Right. Bafana says, sound of the ex sound of explanation of the experiment got me clapping my hands in gratitude. Uh, due, dev due, therefore, to positive sound explaining sound. Yes. Uh, it also got me very excited. And I want to do further experiments, unfortunately. Um, we didn't have access to the machine for further experiments, but yes, thank you. Shamananda Prabhu says, thanks Prabhu for sharing all this with us, very practical and applicable for us to follow. Srila Prabhupada pain, painstakingly put it all down for us to learn and follow and how to become perfect. And he said that personal ambition will spoil everything. So we must just follow as instructed and the process will act wonderfully. Yes. And Prabhupada said, simply wonderful. If you know that beautiful conversation, uh, the devotees made simply wonderful. And it brought simply wonderful Srila Prabhupada. It wasn't, some, it wasn't named simply wonderful. It was uh, a sweet. And Prabhupada you know, took the sweet, poked into his mouth and said, simply wonderful. That's how the name came. And then um, the devotee asked, Nanda Kumar Prabhu asked Prabhupada, if I give prasad to someone on the street, what will happen? Prabhupada said, simply wonderful. He will become simply wonderful. The process is simply wonderful. Krishna is simply wonderful. Uh, you are simply wonderful. Then the devotee said, Prabhupada, you simply wonderful. It'll act simply wonderful. Uh, it's all simply wonderful. So, yes, it will act simply wonderful. Thank you, uh, Mother Uttarani Devi Dasi, for your favorable comment. Mother Lessas Hare Krishna, but thank you for Krishna Kada. Today was such a transcendental, explosive, uplifting, inspiring, and empowering class. Stay blessed always, Prabhu. Thank you very much. Jagannath Charan, Ajaganat Priyapur says, Hare Krishna, thank you for today's most transcendental class. Thank you very much for your wonderful association. Nalini Kantapur says, absolutely wonderful class. Prabhu Krishna is so kind. He gives us everything to offer him because we have nothing. Brilliant to see how the holy name is so powerful. Srila Prabhupada's corporate are amazing. Thank you very, very much. We are so grateful. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Mala says, Hare Krishna. Thank you very much, Prabhu, for the a wonderful nectarian class. Thank you. Prabhu Goswami Prabhu says, uh, your class was simply wonderful. <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, you are all wonderful, simply wonderful. And thank you for uh, your regular association uh, and uh, for us to uh, simply continue to associate with Srila Prabhupada. And if we really just follow Srila Prabhupada's advice, instructions to broadcast this message, it's very, very important. Uh, it's uh, what people need, and we simply have to assess, Prabhupada says, singing, dancing, and refreshments. Uh, let us create this party, Transcendental Krishna Conscious Party, and in this way, we will be happy and invite others, and they will be happy. Navkishori David S. Hare Krishna Prabhu, a very transcendental divine class, truly appreciate it. Thank you very much. So we will end here. Apologies for going a little late, uh, but uh, when we become absorbed in these glories, then time generally is not a consideration. Hare Krishna, please take care, and we will meet again next week. Shri Chilaprao Padki Jai Nitai Gopramnande Hari Hari.